What's up, folks, and welcome to another JS Drop from This Dot. This week, we have Steve Sewell, co-founder and CEO of Builder.io, who will talk about Builder's headless CMS platform and how it embraces the component-driven mindset of modern frameworks. Be sure to like and subscribe for more weekly JavaScript content, live events, and more. Now, let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm Steve. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Builder.io, and I'm gonna walk you through what is Builder and why does it exist? So let me walk you back in time to my last job. I was running web engineering for a company called ShopStyle, and we had this Angular site. We actually had it live in like 2015. So we were doing headless commerce Jamstack really early. And the site was quite beautiful in my opinion, but we had a marketing team that needed to update the site constantly. It was in e-commerce, and as people may or may not know, e-commerce businesses are very marketing businesses. Try new content, see what converts. That's kind of what drives the business. And so we had this great website, and then everybody needed to edit sort of everything. New pages, variations of pages, run A-B tests, let's show different uh, content to menswear shoppers versus women's wear shoppers, et cetera. So the first step was, well, let's hook up a headless CMS because we certainly don't want to hard code all of this. So with a typical structured data headless CMS, what you do is you break the entire page into fields. So you basically say, okay, we want our marketing team to be able to edit that piece of text and that piece of text and that image and that image and that link and that link, et cetera. So you make a form field for every one via a schema. So it kind of generates this gigantic Google form. And we ended up with these forms, these CMS um, structures where there were like hundreds of fields. It got to the point where the marketing team was completely overwhelmed. We'd have to have docs explaining the CMS so they know what to update. Uh, previewing didn't work so well all the time. So, you know, we were just kind of blind and it really created kind of a mess. Um, and things got a lot worse when the marketing team wanted to do net new things. Like we want a new page or we want a new section. Um, or if we want A-B tests or variations, everything was not fitting the structure of the CMS because a headless CMS very much describes how your site exists today, but doesn't leave a ton of flexibility for making changes to the structure and the layout and adding buttons moving forward. So we had this really complicated workflow where just spinning up a page, a variation, or something non-trivial was very complicated, involved a bunch of different teams. And as you may know, you know, marketing is not necessarily something you can really put into a tight box. You need to experiment, you need to try new things, you need to add a sign up and take away the sign up and add a product and take away the product and have two buttons instead of one button. And this just became unwieldy with a typical headless CMS. Now the marketing team was frustrated because every single thing they wanted to do would go to the back of a three month engineering backlog. So a simple marketing experiment could only come, you know, three months at a time. It was pretty insane. So what they did is they grabbed Webflow. They're like, hey, we're tired of waiting. We have a lot to do. We know you engineers don't really like to just add buttons for us and change colors every day for us. So they went and they took a page they'd wanted forever and they built it in Webflow. And they came to the engineering team and said, hey, this drag and drop editor gave us everything we wanted. Now just put this on the Angular site, right? Copy, paste it, embed it, whatever you have to do. This triggered a series of many conversations describing that's just not how this works. There's no such thing as a, a web flow that can plug into whatever tech stack you have. With us, it was Angular, AWS, uh, a custom backend catalog, you know, stuff like that. And they're like, okay, that's fine. How about you put all that stuff into Webflow, right? Can you put the custom backend and those Angular components for sign up and stuff and products into Webflow? And of course, again, it's like, that's not how these things work. If you use a drag and drop system, you're using their entire stack and you don't get the customization we need. But that kind of triggered the idea of like, well, well what if? Like, like, why are all these drag and drop editors confining you to a specific tech stack? Like, what if you could make one that was agnostic to the front end tech and the infrastructure and just delivered over an API like a headless CMS, customizable with fields and queries and plugins and all that? but you can layer in a drag and drop editor so that the engineers aren't just burdened with these constant requests, can focus on meteor technical problems, and the marketing team can drag, drop, publish, et cetera, but it would have to use our Angular components, right? We had components for products and sign up and all this, those should be the pieces and because components are such a well encapsulated uh, abstraction, you know, they really work like building blocks, perfect for a drag and drop editor. Drop in the hero, fill in the text, drop in the products, choose which product to show, all that great stuff. 
And so we made it. And it actually had a surprising amount of unexpected benefits. The first one is migrating to this type of setup actually more embraces the component-driven mindset that we love of modern frameworks like React. So instead of hard-coding content where you have a page and you have a hard-coded all these fields and all the structure of the page baked into the code, always needing to change and deploy code when the layout or details or a button or something needed to change, um, instead you can just actually install a component. This component could live between your header and footer and you can register your components to be the drag and drop elements used inside. That way you don't fall into this problem where, you know, we'd love that sort of structured data fields are clean and structured and queryable, yet they have one big issue, which is you always simultaneously have too much and not enough. There's too many, it's unwieldy, but there's not enough because whatever the marketing team needs next, or it could be a business team, product team, et cetera, they don't have a field for that. So you're always adding and managing them. But at the end of the day, with Builder, this is still just an API. You use an SDK to pull content over an API, just like any headless CMS. It's just JSON, and the JSON just describes, hey, put your hero here with these props, um, put your product here with these props, and we also have some primitive blocks out of the box. So if you allow, um, your non-development team, such as design, et cetera, can make things completely from scratch, so you don't have to build every single thing, but that can still be... Um, conforming to your design system using variables for the fonts, colors, and other things. So everything is perfectly on brand as expected. And like I mentioned, registering your components is a very kind of native, beautiful, simple thing. You take the exact components you've already made, you change nothing, you just register them, and you just specify a little bit more about their inputs. Like the hero uh, title takes a string, um, but maybe you want to render a text field instead of a generic string field. Maybe you want an image upload, stuff like that. And then you just get a drag and drop editor with your components or outside of that even as you like. What's cool is you can hook this up to your website anywhere. So this is not prescriptive. You do not have to rebuild your entire website. You could slot builder in wherever you want. It can build out pages like landing pages between your header and footer served up through your Next.js, you know, Remix, whatever framework you have next. Uh, you can just have builder power a simple section here and there and allow drag and drop within there, which includes A-B testing, personalization, all of that in a very performant way, or use typical structured CMS data like you would any other CMS. So there's no constraint there. We embrace that as well because it makes sense. But when you expand outside of just structured data, you can offer some cool stuff. Like we have a one-click import from Figma. Take any auto layout content of Figma and just suck it into Builder. As you might sort of imagine, sort of when you're kind of blending the worlds of sort of drag and drop, no code, Webflow style page building, and the idea of API driven, API first, headless CMS, uh, there's sort of a basic set of features that's needed in Builder over time. I mean, this is still quite new software, but over the last two years, we've added a lot here. So great support for static site generation and SSR, A-B testing, personalization, analytics, a look at conversions and who's clicking on what, uh, integration scheduling, real-time collaboration and commenting, roles and permissions to make sure that nobody does anything wrong or has access to things that they shouldn't, and great performance across the board. We embrace the C++ mindset of zero-cost abstractions. Everything here is fast and API-driven. We will never add blocking JavaScript iframes or ugly, ugly stuff. It's native to your code. If you use React, it's all just React. And so you can kind of see it this way. We call it a visual CMS, something that can sort of span the gap between what the headless CMSs offer, and they are still fantastic and useful and something that we'll integrate with if you love some of the features of other headless CMSs. But we'll cover that use case too, as well as all the way out into sort of what site builders will cover, create new pages, stuff like that. So you don't have to bring on new tools with new constraints to handle these other use cases, generating pages, A-B testing sections, or managing structured data can be done in one place or well connected to anything else that you like within your stack with great performance. At the end of the day, this mostly just solves workflows, right? So instead of having this sort of code release interdependency bottlenecks where everyone's fighting to get what they want in and the engineers can only do and deploy so much at a time, Instead, we decouple everyone to have faster workflows. So if marketing wants to just make a page variation, they can duplicate page, rearrange, hit publish, choose who should see it or if it should be an A-B test, and that's it. They can measure and repeat without needing to pull you in from engineering. Engineering can focus on what you're doing and not have to be tied to marketing and content. So we decouple code and content in a very component-driven and clean way. 
We already have a lot of cool stuff built with Builder out there in the ecosystem. Like I said, we're young, it's new technology, but it really is working. And there's a lot of exciting stuff on the web built with this technique. And as you might imagine, a Webflow style editor, but that can use your React components, your data, any of that, it gets really powerful. You can make components for amazing, stunning animations and all this stuff, drag and drop and publish. It really makes for an awesome workflow that generates just incredible content and just makes teams happier. Uh, our website, of course, is made with builder.io, and you can get a look at some other of the examples of customers here that are using Builder. And as you would expect, performance is fast. We care like crazy about performance. We really do think that the no-code world has been held back by not always embracing modern and performant technology. And so we build that in, we showcase it with us and our customers sort of hitting these sort of best practices for performance and we build a lot of open source software around it. You may heard, have heard of Quick, Party Town, or potentially Mitosis. Mitosis is how we support all of the frameworks out there in a clean compiler driven way. And we have some cool other stuff too, like our Figma to HTML, where you can import Figma um, to code or you can turn code into Figma designs. So. That's just a quick look at everything we do. Uh, thank you so much for hearing me ramble about Builder and uh, try it out sometime. And uh, you can always DM me on Twitter what you think about it. I'm at Steve8708. Thanks.